Welcome to video e-learning program. This is Dr. S. Nandagopalan. We'll be talking about the data structures module three linked list. In the today's session, we shall take up a topic called a circular list. If you can recall, we have talked about the linked list, a single linked list in the earlier session. And uh, normally a singly linked list has got a final or a last node whose link field is null. But in this case of a circular list, now we will not have this kind of a last node, but the link field will be pointing to the first node. So let me just first share the PPT. So this is what we are going to discuss today. So here we have what is known as an ordinary linked list. Let me just uh, show you that first. Then we can easily understand the difference. Yeah, supposing if you remove this circularity, then we will notice that it is an ordinary linked list. Let me just draw that for the benefit of the listeners. With three nodes, you are able to see now a singly linked list with P pointing to the first node. So this is my first node, this is my second node, this is my third node. You can see here that this is a null field. That means the next field of or the link field of the last node is null, indicating that there are no more nodes after this. However, in the case of a circular list, you can see here the la so-called last node. See, actually in the circular list, we will not have uh, the concept of what is known as the first or the last node, unlike your singly linked list. You can see here that the first node is being pointed by P and the last node is having, the, the link field of the last node is having a null. So it's a clear cut distinction between the first and the last node. However, here you can see that since the nodes are all having this circularity, which is shown in the second figure here, this one, where for example, so-called 12 is the first node. Its link field is, uh, you know, pointing to the second node, that is 15, and its link field is pointing to the so-called third node, which is 47, and its link field in turn is pointing to the first. So I can do the same thing, even calling this as my first node, that is 47. This is linked to 12, linked to 15, back to this. So. I could take any node as my first node and uh, you know anything as the last node. So there is nothing like first or the last in the case of a circular list. We do have a lot of advantages of using such kind of uh, data structures, especially converting or treating a list as a circular kind of a structure. So, there are variations which we could also show here that in order to distinguish between a first, a so-called first node, the rest of the nodes, we can also have what is known as a header node, where the header node info may be immaterial and uh, or it may contain a special value, etc. And it is so-called the header node, which is not part of our information. So. In order to make sure that this is our first node. There is another important point which you may notice here that in the so-called first, you know, 12 is the first node, which we are not going to make our pointer P pointing to because we need a point variable. Now, in this case, we are trying to make sure that our point variable is pointing to the so-called last node. Now, 
again, this has got a significance. That is, we can see or we can look the first node, which is very easy. That is, next of P will give us the address of the first node, so called first node. And adding nodes uh, to the friend or to the end or to the middle, etc., can easily be done if we can maintain one such point. And it's not mandatory that we should also, I mean, always have uh, our P to point to the last node, but it could point to even here. But the programming part of it requires some kind of a changes. Fine. So this is the preliminary details of the circular linked list. As usual, we will study how to add a new node to the existing circular list. And uh, it could be friend, it could be middle, it could be end, etc. Similarly, we'll also talk about the deletion process here in the circular link list. Okay. And we can also talk about what is known as how to implement stack and queue using the circular list. So instead of using normal link list, we are trying to use here some kind of what is known as a circular list. Under creation, we can insert, we can delete and we can search for any given node. And uh, again, we will not use any header node for all these uh, you know, functionalities of a circular list, but we can modify our program or algorithm in order to take up with header nodes. Okay, when we talk about stack, of course, there are two functions, push and pop. When we talk about queue, again, we have add and delete or NQ and DQ. Right. So this is uh, the one which I was talking about with header node and without header node. So no header node, like you can see here, P is pointing to the last node and uh, we have the pointer uh, that is the link pointer of this so-called last node is pointing to the so-called first node. Now, in case if we have a header node, you can see here this is the structure of any circular list without our information. There is no real nodes, but only a header node. So it is mandatory that before we actually add any new element to the circular list, the first job is to create a header node. So you will understand this better when we take up some applications like adding two polynomials. So that time we will again take up this header node concept and the circular list. Fine. So when we have a header node uh, with three nodes of our own information like 230 and 7 you can see here that the last nodes link pointer or the next pointer is not pointing to 2 but is pointing to the header node so that's very important that we can have uh, you know the pointer we have not shown here this is the start i can also say that my p will be always pointing to the header node so, for example, if I want to insert a new element or a node, you know, friend, that means as a first node, I can use this as my starting point. That means I insert here. Now, supposing if I want to insert in between, that means middle, I can start from here, always bypass this header node in order to look for any info. You can see here the info field of a header node is immaterial as I already told you that some people use this header node information field for some specific purposes like the number of nodes, the current number of nodes, uh, you know, being stored here. Supposing if I add a new node, I just increment that. If I delete a node, I just decrement. So you don't need to actually go through the entire list. Supposing assume that I have 1 million nodes, I, I don't need to actually count one by one, but instead I can just look into this header node information, which is of the order of one now, the complexity. So it, you would get it instantaneously. So you don't need to actually browse through the entire list. So these are some of the advantages where we can keep a header node, which will give us this extra information. 
Right. So we have now uh, the three operations which I mentioned earlier, that is how to add a node from scratch. I mean, build, for example, uh, a circular list from scratch. But remember that I am not using any header node here. OK, now create a new node that is Q. So that's as usual. Now you can see here P may, may be initially null. Uh, 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 so just similar to our uh, normal linked list. And uh, in order to create the first node, I create a node getting memory dynamically. I call this as Q and information field of that particular Q is loaded with 99. So it's, it's ordinary kind of thing. It's very simple. So Q of uh, info or info of Q is OK, 12 is not 99. It is 12 because it's, it should match with the figure, right? So it's a type of error. So 12 is the information field which we have created. Next, what do we do? We need to make it as circular. So how do we do that? The next of this queue should point to this. That means this should point to this. So that's what this statement says. Next of queue points to queue again. Since it's a temporary memory location or the temporary node, which is pointed by Q, now we have to make sure that our original pointer P points to this. So what we do, P equals Q. So P should take, initially it may be null. Now it should take on the address of Q, that is P equals Q. So this is my third step. So you can see here, now Q of course will vanish because it's a local variable, whereas P is more of the actual pointer to the circular list. Now you can see that the next of this is already pointing to this number one. Number two, my pointer P is pointing to this. Now the same concept should work or the same set of statements should work even when we add more nodes. Right, so that's what uh, this slide actually explains. What happens when we try to add some more nodes? So this is my original circular list having just one node which is 12 being pointed by P and it is circular in nature. Now I'm, I'm, uh, I wish to add one more node called 15. As usual I create a node, new node that is Q. Info of that is put as 15. That's uh, also very straightforward. So Q now points to a new node which is uh, having the info field as 15 and now we have to join this to the front of the existing node 12. So what do we do? We need to take the next of Q as it is shown here to join with this. That means next of Q should point to next of P. So this is my next. So in this case, because it has just one node, next of P and P is one and the same. But when we have more nodes, it's not the case. So what we do is next of Q should point to next of P, which is this one only. So this is done. Now what happens? This is still, you know, circular with the 12 only. So this has to be removed. And this circularity should be provided for 15. That means I should take this next of P and point to Q. So that is my second. So this is my first step. This is my second step. So let me just repeat. The first step is to link the next field of Q to the existing list. And uh, the second step is to make sure that this circularity is managed for that is it is maintained for our uh, newly added uh, element which is 50. So next of P should point to Q. So that is this one. So the first statement is next of Q is equal to next of P and the second statement is next of P should be equal to Q. Right. So now how does it look like after this? You can see here this link is the one which is shown here. 
and this dotted line is nothing but this and P still points to 12 and Q of course vanishes. And now you can see that our link uh, list, circular link list has got two uh, elements, 15 and uh, 12. That means, uh, you know, 12 being the so-called first element. And uh, let's assume that we would like to add one more so that we can understand now the working of this. So now as usual, create a new node for Q. 47 is my info and uh, I execute this statement next of Q. You see this one that is this first step should be equal to next of P. So what is next of P is this node that is this node 15. So that is the uh, advantage of keeping my P being pointed to this. So it's very simple this statement and again I change my linking of the circularity that is next of P that is this one should point to Q. So now you can see here it would come like this. So that's what is shown here. So this is my second step. So the same set of statements are executed even when we had the third node or a third element. The same thing would continue even if we add more elements to this circular list. So now we are able to successfully construct or build a circular list uh, where we can keep on adding any number of nodes into this existing circular list or from scratch. So this is uh, the concept behind the circular list. OK, now we will convert this uh, diagrams into algorithm, right? So insert friend Q get first node. So this is the element to be added and put the element to the info as we have been doing. And if it is null, we execute this two statements. So it's very simple. Otherwise, we go with the next of you know this because there is a difference between these two sets of statements and this when P is pointing to nil. That means when we are trying to add the first node. So it, it, it won't work you know, in the same way. So that's why we try to uh, separate it out and uh, try to check first whether it uh, has no nodes, in which case we execute this. Supposing if it has already some nodes, then we execute this same two statements which we have already shown in the figure. And once we add this new node and you can return P, which is our actual pointer. So the calling program will have the updated list, right? So this is the most uh, easiest way of doing or constructing a circular list. Now let's talk about how to insert in the middle. Uh, this is very interesting because if you recall in the ordinary singly linked list, we have used a, a predecessor and uh, in order to make sure that the insertion could go on, uh, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's not waste time on that. Uh, the listeners can actually go through my previous uh, video lecture in order to understand how insert into a singly linked list in the middle. So that uh, video will actually explain the methodology in which case we maintain two pointers. One is K which will search for the key node and the second is a predecessor which will be behind the K node. So once you get that predecessor node address, uh, you know, inserting in the middle becomes uh, easier. Now that's for deletion. And for insertion again, we can use it in a similar way. So let's assume that uh, we would like to, uh, you know, insert after this, I think, uh, uh, the key element, which is 50. So in the initial list, uh, you know, we, we start with uh, this particular node called K that is next of P uh, and uh, we can iterate through this until we find the key node which is 15. Let's assume that we have already got that 
and hence k actually will point to the uh, key element or the key node. Then from here, actually we can insert. We don't require any predecessor. Predecessor is actually required for the deletion, right? Uh, let's see in circular list how it could be modified or how things become very easy, right? So once we find the kth node, that means the key node, then we can actually insert. Uh, this is for the iterative step. And uh, you can see here, this is the way by which we insert. That's very simple because the next of Q equal to this and uh, next of K will point to Q. So insertion is very simple here. And uh, once you find this, okay, let's assume that we would like to add 15. So the key node is 15 and the element to be added is 99. Okay, so the new node is created, Q, and Q of info is put as 99, and uh, uh, we have to, of course, iterate through, which I have not uh, shown here in this. So this pool, here we will actually use a while loop in order to find the kth node. Now, once you find that, then you can easily do what I said, you know, next of Q, this is first step, and this is second one. Or in, in my case, it is second step. This is my third. So what is the second step? Next of Q equal to next of K. So that is this one. And next of K, that is this one, should point to Q. So this link is broken. So never break a link, existing link, uh, before you, know, you have set up the actual new kind of linking. For example, if I break this link first, then we'll not be able to get the rest of the nodes. Okay, so never break the link. In the link list, this is the main problem uh, which the beginners face. So never break a link unless and until you have already set up your new links. See, this is my new link. So first I execute this, right? So that my next of Q is next of K. So I depend on this next of address. So if I modify this next of K address, then I'll be losing my entire list. So that is dangerous. So you'll get a runtime error. If you are working on Linux or Ubuntu kind of, uh, you know, uh, framework, I mean, uh, platform, uh, you will see that you will get what is known as memory fault core dumped. So that's a fatal error, uh, you know, which deals with the internal memory. So never do that. Be careful. So you can't interchange these two statements. That's the point which I'm trying to make here. So the sequence of statements in the linked list is very, very important. The the most important, most uh, predominant kind of uh, point to keep in mind is that never ever break a link until you have established the other links. Okay, so the next of uh, Q is pointing to next of K, next of K pointing to Q. Right, so that would insert 99. So now you have four nodes. So now we can uh, uh, convert this diagram again into what is known as uh, an algorithm. Again, take care of the single node case, you know, all that, or null case, etc. So if P is a null or nil, return P. So we are not going to uh, do anything. Sometimes, you know, some people design this algorithm in such a way that Supposing, assume that P is null, that means you're trying to search for a key so that we could actually add or insert that in the middle, like in this case, X is the key, E is the element to be inserted after this X. It so happens that X may not be there, number one. Number two is that the list itself may be null or empty. Now what happens is that in this particular algorithm, if P is null or nil, 
we are not going to do anything. Now, some people, you know, may do in such a way that in the case of P being null, that means empty list, you can add this keynote by default, something like that. So that is also possible. So you can modify this algorithm in order to take it as an exercise. Okay, now assume that P is not null, so it executes the rest of the statements. So we start with uh, the first node, that is your K, and K equal to next of K. Now remember, it's a circular list. So I have something like this, right? So This is my P and this is my circular. So what I'm trying to say here is that K is initialized to P. And when would you start searching for the key in the list? You should start from here, right? You should start from here. So how to reach here? K equal to next of K. That means you will come here. So K, it's a repeat until loop so that we first advance the pointer and then look for the key. So you can see here K comes and sits in the so-called first node and this repetition is done or carried out until either you find the key or until you come back here when the key is not there in the list. These are the two possibilities. So info of k not equal to x and k not equal to p because you would end up with the last. See, remember it's a repeat until that is first you execute and then check. So last node also will be included. Okay. For example, assume that this is my x. So it compares this, no, advances, no, it compares with this, x, yes, it's it will do it. Okay, so once you have got the key in the circular list, now what we do is we have to check because of which condition you have come out. Supposing assume that we have got the key here, <coughs> so we can check that using if statement. So if the information field of K is equal to X, that means we got the node or the key node and now we can insert. So these two statements are already explained. For example, next of k equal to next of k and next of k equal to q. So that means wherever you are. Even this is true even here. For example, assume that x is this and assume that I want to add this new one, which is my q, right? So this is my e. That's a new a, a element. So next of k equal to next of k. So what is so this k actually has come and uh, pointing to my keynote. Okay, so this is pointing to here because next of q equals next of k. Next of k is nothing but this. Next, what we do is next of k, right? Next of k is this one, will point to q. So this is no longer pointing to this, but it will point to this. So essentially what happened here is that this is my first node. So let me call this as first second. So this is my first node, which is pointing to my second node. Now pointing to my X. Now X blue color x next field is pointing to my e so this is my e the next field of e you can see here is pointing to one so i just take this pointing to one right that's it so i'm able to insert now even if it happens to be the last node or somewhere in between anything it will work so supposing if this condition is false 
we would say that the key is not formed in the circular list. So it's very simple to add here anywhere in, in the given circular list. OK, now let's come to the deletion part of it. Now, how do we delete? We can, uh, this is what I said earlier, that means uh, the predecessor, you know, and uh, the kth node, all those things. Right, so here in the circular list, let's see uh, how things are going to be. Let's assume that we want to delete key node, which is 47, right? Let's assume a circular list with three nodes, that is 12, 15, and 47, and uh, P being pointing to the so-called last node, which is 47 itself. Okay, now we would like to delete this and make sure that we are left with 12 and 15, and still our uh, pointers should, you know, point to the appropriate nodes. So as usual, initialize uh, our K to this P. Looking for, because uh, the deletion again, we have to first look for the key node as usual, uh, iterative kind of step. Once you find that, now we have to delete. I'm not yet explained how the concept of deletion happens here in the circular list. We'll see that. Okay, so, you can see here that uh, in the in the next iteration we get the predecessor let's assume that uh, you know the predecessor is the one which is behind k as we already said and uh, it's very easy that next of uh, predecessor is pointing to next of k so what is next of k is this one so that's what it happens you know next of k is this and predecessor is made to point here and uh, k will always be one node after the predecessor so you can see here k equal to next of k so predecessor will always be behind k right next one more iteration k is advanced and predecessor is also advanced and uh, keynote is found. Keynote is found because now it becomes equal. Now we can say that next of predecessor, etc. So that I'll show you. Yeah, keynote is found. And you can see here next of predecessor is actually pointing to P of next or K of next. So that is nothing but this is no longer there. So we have to make sure that the next field actually points to 12 because this node is the one which is going to be deleted. So the steps are given here. Let us see the algorithm which becomes easier here. See, this is uh, one you may, you may wonder that why predecessor is used here. In fact, in circular list, this is because uh, I, I didn't want to confuse the listeners uh, because, you know, this is pretty easier uh, in order to implement the deletion process, just similar to the normal linked list. But we can also avoid this predecessor. That's what I'll, I'll take up next because let's not mix up together. OK, so let us follow now the normal method. That is what we have used already in the uh, linked list case, right? OK, so this is my complete uh, algorithm. So starting from scratch, that is if P is null, return P because nothing is there, so no need to delete anything. And this is one node case. Assume that the list has only one node, that means that we are going to delete the same thing. OK, so if P equal to next of P. And if it happens to be that key node, let's assume that and uh, P is made nil and return P. So that job is also done. So here you can add uh, it's one node and uh, check whether it is 
I mean info field is same as X. So I have assumed here that that's the key node. Supposing if it's not key, I mean node not found will obviously be taken care. Right, next you have the uh, multiple node case where as we have already explained, K is initialized to P and we have a repeat until structure where predecessor follows always K. So first it takes on the address of K and K is advanced by one node. So that's very simple. And this repeat repetition will happen as long as one of these con two conditions is false. So let's assume that this condition becomes false. That means the node is found. Key node is found. Supposing if this condition is false, that means it's not found. So that's why you have else class not found. So if it is found, then if k equals p, right? Then you can do this. Otherwise, this because this again make sure that it's going to be the node, the last node itself, the K, the node, that means the node being pointed by K. In other words, the key node is same as the so-called last node, in which case the statements are like this. Now, otherwise it's somewhere in between. Okay, so next of predecessor is next of K. Supposing if it is, you know, 15, which we want to delete. So next of predecessor is equal to next of K. So this node is dropped. But when the key node is the so-called first node itself, first node in the sense the node being pointed by P, then things are going to be a bit different. See, that's what we have here. So these two statements have to be executed. So it's important to separate out these two. Right. So the deletion process happens and you can updated value of P can be returned. So this bit tricky uh, because whenever we have the singly linked list without a circularity, we can always go flat, you know, one sided kind of link, uh, you know, browsing. See, in a, in a normal link list, what happens? The last node is always there and with a link field null. Now we have the first node being pointed by P, right? Pointed by P. So we can easily go through this until nil. The next field of the any node is nil. We, we can easily understand there is the last node. But the problem in circular list is not that, that we can easily find out the last node. So that is the reason why this uh, algorithmic designs will become a bit tougher. Right. OK, before we come to this slide, let me just complete. Supposing if I want to delete by not maintaining the predecessor, let us assume OK, I think this is Again, having K, so let me just draw for the benefit of the listeners. Let us take four nodes so that there won't be any confusion. So let me take a five, seven, three, two. And this is my P. Assume that I would like to delete, say three. Okay, this is my, okay. Now I'm going to explain without maintaining any predecessor variable, auxiliary pointer variable, we can still delete. So what I do, I'll just start with K. That means initializing my K to P. 
next advance this k equal to next of k so k comes here and my while loop will compare the info of k with x that is my key remember my x is 3 key node is 3 it's not equal so advance my k so my k comes here compare 7 with 3 not equal so advance k again now info of k is 3 x is 3 so it's equal so i got the address of the node to be deleted i got the address of the node to be deleted which is the one which i want now now i have to delete this node i don't have now the predecessor now what do i do so what do i do it's very simple now what i do is i will maintain or i will use another pointer say in this case i'll use t okay which is nothing but next of this now the idea is i want to make this t to come and sit behind k then i can easily delete this how do i do that what i do here is that next of t as long as next of t not equal to k right so kth address i know next of t this is my t next of t is it equal to k no so advance my t okay i'll just use a different color so my t now will come and sit here is next of t equals k no so advance my t again so this is my t is next of t equals k yes now next of t is equal to k in which case i break the loop i come out now i have got the predecessor address of k now what i do is next of t is equal to next of k next of t is equal to next of k done so there is no need to carry my pointer i mean predecessor pointer along with k as we did in this case or in the singly linked case after finding the kth node i can because it's circular i can just come around and then make sure that i you know uh, make my temporary uh, variable that is pointer variable to stand behind my k so there's another method which many people use it in order to uh, delete a node in the circular list you can write an algorithm i will leave it to you similarly here uh, we can implement uh, you know stack and queue using circular list last time we have used normal list but this time you can use the same list that is front insertion and uh, queue again maintain two pointers clear insertion and front deletion can be done so that i'll leave to you as an assignment or exercise okay we come to the end of the circular list and thanks for watching we'll meet again thank you